No. I am your father. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at enduring cinematic examples of beings made up of both human and machine parts. Man-made androids such as Roy Batty from Blade Runner, as well as robots and artificial intelligence, will not be eligible for inclusion. Come with me if you want to live. Number 10, Luke Devereaux, Universal Soldier. Do you really think for one second those wimps at the Pentagon would allow the regeneration of dead soldiers? American soldiers? Action star Jean-Claude Van Damme has a long, storied resume to his credit, including starring in a film that was actually titled Cyborg. Van Damme didn't portray a cyborg in that film, but his character of Luke Devereaux from 1992's Universal Soldier certainly fits the bill. You push a car faster than my mother drives, okay? Uh, uh, you use ice like other people use band-aids, and, 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 and then you just you run through walls. Now, I'm sorry, you know, but this is not normal human behavior. Devereaux is a military man killed in Vietnam, but cryogenically frozen for future scientific experimentation. This results in Devereaux becoming a genetically augmented super soldier. But he isn't the only one. Universal Soldier pits cyborg against cyborg as Devereaux faces off against the sergeant from his old outfit, who has gone insane. Don't tell me what to do, soldier. I give the orders to run here. You're gonna have to learn that. Number 9, Dr. Julius No. Dr. No. Well, give my not shaking hands. It becomes a bit awkward with these and this foot. Everybody has a favorite James Bond villain, but there's always something special about the OG. Dr. Julius No is 007's first cinematic adversary, a cunning criminal mastermind who just so happens to be missing his hands. No is a cyborg, having replaced his severed appendages with metal replacements, although No doesn't necessarily need them to get one over on Bond. My work has given me a unique knowledge of radioactivity, but not without costs. Still, Dr. No's impressive physical presence combined with his immorality and dizzying intellect made him an all-time iconic Bond baddie. Said simply, Dr. No set the template for many other power-hungry fiends to emerge in his wake. Clumsy effort, Mr. Bond, you disappoint me. I'm not a fool, so please do not treat me as one. Number 8, Brixton Lore, Hobbs and Shaw. Deckard Shaw, it's been a long time. Good to see you, Brixton. Nobody goes to a Fast and Furious movie for logics, physics, or even good taste. They show up for the explosions, the CGI stunts, and the overacting. Idris Elba definitely seemed to be having a good time when he played Brixton Lore in this spin-off flick from the FNF franchise, titled Hobbs and Shaw. You know the men on them. <laughs> I am way better. I'm the future of mankind. Lore was shot and left for dead during his tenure with the terrorist organization Etienne, only to be revived as a super soldier. The impressive power of his cybernetic enhancements and prosthetic limbs are matched only by his boastfulness, since Lore often proclaims himself to be a black Superman. Because what I realize now that I did not realize then is that when you shot me, you gave me a gift. Look at me, a black Superman. Number seven, Cable, Deadpool 2. My name's Cable. I'm from the future. Just walk away. Marvel fans waited a long time for the comic character Cable to be adapted for the big screen. Josh Brolin's iteration of Cable possesses little of the character's initial mutant powers of telekinesis, but instead takes on a more cyborg-like direction. So what exactly do you do in the future anyway, huh? Some kind of soldier? Yeah, something like that. This ties into the young Cable's infection with a techno-organic virus at the hands of Apocalypse. As a result, Brolin's Cable highlights the mutant's telescopic infrared eye while other abilities of the character include hacking to computer systems and time travel. As for Cable's trademarked surliness, eh, we think Brolin nailed that aspect of the character as well. I can't bring him down alone. So here we are. Number six, Alita, Alita Battle Angel. How do you feel? Okay. It isn't necessarily the easiest task to adapt the Japanese manga for Western audiences, never mind one as sprawling as Alita Battle Angel. The film's ambitious visuals won over many doubters. However, particularly thanks to Rosa Salazar's motion-captured performance as the title character. It's really nice work. Did Doc Ito do it? She built all of me. Except my core. Alita is an amnesiac who is struggling to make sense of not only of her past, but also of her cybernetic nature. She admittedly only appears in human form sparingly, with many details of her backstory, stressing the fact that Alita was turned into a cyborg at a very young age. Despite this, Alita's striking appearance and fearsome fighting abilities make her a standout and breakout crossover star. I'm not your daughter. I don't know what I am. Number five, the Borg. Star Trek First Contact. Borg. Sounds Swedish. The Borg is often mentioned on short lists of fan-favorite Star Trek franchise villains, full stop. And it's easy to see why, too. 
since their physical design is so fascinating and their motivation so compelling. The Borg operates as a hive mind, sure, but they're also cybernetic aliens by nature, seeking to assimilate new tech and cultural knowledge across the universe. Do you control the Borg Collective? You imply a disparity where none exists. I am the Collective. They also forcibly modify their victims with surgical implants in an attempt to create what the Borg sees as perfection. Meanwhile, the end results of these experiments often feels like a fate worse than death. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. Number 4. Cyborg. Justice League. You are not a monster. It's weird that you thought I meant me. This entry may seem like a softball, but you know what they say, if the cybernetic shoe fits, wear it. Cyborg, aka Victor Stone, has appeared in a lot of small screen DC Comics adaptations, as well as some animation. 2017's Justice League saw Ray Fisher bring Cyborg to the big screen, a take that changes some aspects of the character's backstory. Yeah, ever since we got visitors from Krypton, people have been waiting for the next alien invasion. Now I gotta wonder if I'm it. The end results are the same, however, with Stone seeing his body adapted with interdimensional tech. The upgrades include the abilities to technopathically harness his advanced body weaponry, as well as the power of flight. Thankfully, this cyborg is on our side. No one else can do what you do. No. If these are gifts, then why am I the one paying for them? Number 3. Officer Alex Murphy, Robocop Franchise. He's on. What's the story? We were able to save the left arm. What? I thought we agreed on total body prosthesis, now lose the arm, okay? He's the future of law enforcement. Half man, half machine, all cop. These are just a few of the taglines from 1987's RoboCop, and they succinctly describe the plot of this ultra-violent action movie classic. Officer Alex Murphy is a Detroit cop who's cornered and shot to pieces by Clarence Boddicker and his gang. <laughs> Good night, sweet prince. <laughs> Murphy is then made a part of an experimental corporate project and turned into RoboCop. This cyborg is now assigned to the streets, utilizing his offensive upgrades, resilient exoskeleton, and computerized targeting systems to take on city crime, one bad guy at a time. Robo, excuse me, Robo, any special message for all the kids watching at home? Stay out of trouble. Number 2. The T-800, the Terminator franchise. Fully armored, very tough, but outside it's living human tissue, flesh, Skin, hair, blood, grown for the cyborgs. Arnold Schwarzenegger's T-800 barely scrapes by our criteria, because one could argue that he's essentially an android, not a cyborg. That said, the T-800's own admission that he's living tissue over a metal endoskeleton lends him enough human parts to lend him a prime spot on our list. You're like a machine underneath, right? But sort of alive outside? I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. And why not? There's arguably very few sci-fi action films as perfect as the first two Terminator films, while Arnie's T-800 works brilliantly as both a hero and villain. It doesn't matter if this cyborg from the future is cracking quips or shooting up tech noir. The T-800 is an all-timer. Now, don't take this the wrong way, but you are a Terminator, right? Yes. Cyberdyne Systems Model 101. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Winter Soldier, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes, updated for battle. Bucky? Who the hell is Bucky? Frankenstein, Death Race 2000 franchise. Mostly human, save for the hand grenade. Only the winner of the race is to shake hands with Mr. President. Is that a grenade? A hand grenade. That handshake is all I've lived for for as long as I can remember. Alex Rain, Nemesis, a cyborg bounty hunter in the year 2027. The cyber transplants have really taken to you. Can't tell what's real and what's synthetic. You'll be all machines soon. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader, Star Wars Franchise You are beaten. It is useless to resist. Don't let yourself be destroyed as Obi-Wan did. Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi may have referred to Anakin Skywalker as more machine now than man, but there's no denying that Darth Vader is the most influential cyborg in the galaxy. It's a perfect cinematic storm, really. 
James Earl Jones' booming voice helps define the character's personality, but his imposing design also underlines Vader as a physical threat. Where are those transmissions you intercepted? What have you done with those plans? Elsewhere, there's Hayden Christensen's performance as a young Skywalker, crippled by Kenobi during their duel on Mustafar. Here we see the young man, once thought of as the Chosen One, fully corrupted by the Galactic Empire and turned into the Darth Vader we fear and respect. I'll not leave you here, I've got to save you. You already have Luke. But also love. Can you name any more standout movie cyborgs? Let us know in the comments. This is intense. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.